okay? This is something you had to be worried about all offseason. Now, we have been saying Tank Dell, Nico Collins, these are guys that were propped up based off elite level quarterback play last year, not necessarily because they're elite level talents in their own right. What I thought the Houston Texans would potentially do is either go out there, take a wide receiver in round one, round two of the NFL draft this season, or I thought that you were going to see Houston go out there and trade for T. Higgins. I didn't know Stefan Diggs was going to be available for the Texans. And this has some pretty big impacts. I mean, I'm already seeing people go through and say, um, tanks going down. No, um, it's going to be Nico Collins. No Diggs had 36% of the snaps in the slot last year. This is the correct response in my mind. Shane says, I'm worried for both. That is Dell and Nico. I'm also not viewing this as an upgrade for Diggs. Now we can go through and look at this a couple different ways. One, do not be overthinking. Oh my gosh, Stevon Diggs is going to play this role in this offense. It's going to be good for Tank Dell. It's going to be bad for Tank Dell. It's going to be good for Nico Collins. It's going to be bad for... No, it is bad across the board. Stevon Diggs coming in. This is an alpha wide receiver that we have seen in years past go through and command 25% of the targets in his offense. You go ahead and you look at Tank Dell. While Tank Dell, yes, was a pretty good rookie, Tank Dell is going to turn 25 years old this season. It's the oldest rookie that we've pretty much ever seen at the wide receiver position have that kind of success. Nico Collins, while yes, he was phenomenal this past season, this is a wide receiver that without CJ Stroud through the first two years of his NFL career, Averaged 31 receiving yards per game and then 48 receiving yards per game. I am not trying to discredit Tank Dell. I'm not trying to discredit Nico Collins. I think that they are good NFL wide receivers that were propped up by an elite level quarterback to have phenomenal seasons in fantasy last year. I mean, we tweeted this out last season. I don't even know if we'd be able to find the tweet, but we got so much hate for it. But nonetheless, I am projecting out Stefan Diggs to come in and be the wide receiver one in this offense. We've seen Diggs have success over a larger sample than either of the other two receivers. We've seen Stefan Diggs have that success with multiple different quarterbacks. So I think that at least in my mind, Diggs is going to be the number one guy here. The compensation was interesting where the bills are getting a second round pick. The Texans are going to be getting Diggs, a sixth, and a fifth. But keep in mind, not only are Diggs, I mean, the Texans getting Diggs, they're also going to be getting his contract as well. So it's not to say, oh, Stephon Diggs only valued as a second round pick. Because if you go through and you take a rookie with that second round pick, then obviously you're going to get a significant discount on the money that you're having to play, pay that player. So, I mean, if we're going to go through and pull up what the expectations are for these guys and their costs going forward. We can look at this both from a redraft as well as a dynasty perspective. First, let's pull up um, dynasty values here. I'm going to be looking at flogfantasy.com. I want to get a sense of what we have in terms of the community values and what we have as well in terms of the expert values. Now, I'm going to share my screen real quick. It's going to look gross. Just stick with me one second. And I'll make sure it looks better for y'all. Or actually, maybe a, uh, F it. We'll just redo it. Okay. Do, 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 do. Safari flockfantasy.com. Let's go ahead. Let's pull this up. So uh, these community rankings are completely free on the site. If you ever want to pull them up, it's flogfantasy.com. I'm sure you already know this by now. We actually just had a massive launch on flogfantasy.com as well with a new tool. But it is behind the paywall. I, I'm sure a lot of y'all will like to play around with it, though. But anyway, looking at this, let's pull up where we have these Houston guys now. These are the community rankings. Like I said, these are the free rankings on the site. Not necessarily how I'm valuing these players. Right now, Nico Collins was the wide receiver 13 in Dynasty. Tank Dell was the wide receiver 15. These are the community rankings. The expert rankings had him had both wide receivers lower than this. 
And the expert rankings are made up of my rankings, of the rankings from the guys at Fantasy Stock Exchange, Dynasty Land Football, I mean, and Dynasty Domain. You can also pull up any of my individual rankings if you'd like. Just hit filter, add expert, and then go hit Mason Dodd. I'll update these today for you with this news. But nonetheless, if we were looking at where these Houston guys are now, I mean, I had Jalen Waddle ranked ahead of them in the first place. I definitely still think Waddle should go ahead of him. I, I think you probably take T. Higgins ahead of these guys. I'm taking Devonta Smith ahead of him. I think Nico Collins, Tank Dell, should be falling closer to the wide receiver 20-ish mark. I don't know if we can move him down to like wide receiver 20 through through wide receiver 25. It's just a much different overall tier that we are looking at there. And now to pull up where Stefan Diggs is, Stefan Diggs was at wide receiver 27. Now it's an interesting spot for Diggs in that he goes to a quarterback that should have a ton of passing volume, right? Like let's go ahead and let's pull up the leaders in the NFL this past season in terms of just passing yards per game. We can be looking at adjusted yards per pass attempt, but who was number one in the NFL in passing yards per game this past season? If you can see that, hopefully this is big enough for y'all. That is a Mr. C.J. Stroud. Josh Allen down here averaging about 20 fewer passing yards per game. Now, of course, Allen's going to be a much better guy in fantasy because Josh Allen's going to run the ball over C.J. Stroud is not going to. Also, at the same time, we can say that Houston's probably going to be a worse situation. Because if you're looking at what Diggs has to compete for in Houston, he does have to compete with Nico Collins. He does have to compete with Tank Dell, both of whom are still going to get targets. Both of whom, like I said, I think are pretty good wide receivers, just not as good as what they were propped up to be last season. So if you were looking at quarterback play, for a rookie to come out and lead the NFL in passing yards per game, like I said, I think C.J. Stroud, you can already pencil in to be an elite level player. I mean, it was pretty clear the first month of the season that that was going to be the case. The passing volume should be there in Houston. I think CJ Stroud is almost a lock to be top five yet again in terms of his overall passing yards per game. I mean, the adjusted yards per pass attempt, he was sitting here at number two as a freaking rookie. He's also going to be someone that's not running the ball, not taking rushing touchdowns, unlike Josh Allen. So there should be more passing volume to go around overall. But the difference between the depth charts is going to be striking. Like, let's go ahead. And this shouldn't be updated yet on flogfantasy.com. So we should still be able to see what this looked like. So we will get the updated teams for everybody here relatively soon. But no, let's just pull up the depth chart from ESPN. I think that'll be a better view from everybody. ESPN Bills depth chart. Do, 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 do. Okay, so going into this, if you were looking at who else Stevon Diggs was going to be competing for targets with, you had Shakir, you had Samuel, you had Kincaid and Dawson Knock. That is it. Maybe James Cook as well. Now, of course, a lot of people are penciling in the Buffalo Bills to go out there and they were and maybe planning on taking a wide receiver at the end of round one. Now, that is pretty much a guarantee at this point. But Buffalo is going to have to go with a wide receiver round one of this NFL draft. But nonetheless, even if the passing volume would have been a little bit less in Buffalo in comparison to Houston, it still would have been a better situation for Stefan Diggs, given the fact that there's just simply not nearly as much competition in Buffalo as the Houston Texans currently have. Plus, not to mention that historically speaking, if you are looking at wide receivers at 30 years old to get traded, the majority of the time, those guys are going to be players that they're getting traded for a reason. I mean, you're not, I, I know in years past, we just saw Tyree kill get dealt, right? But a lot of these times, these wide receivers, if they're traded, it goes to say something about them. And maybe you shouldn't be super, super excited if the team that just had them was willing to give up on them. Now, Stefan Diggs, the squeaky wheel wide receiver. We know he's been on Twitter pretty much the past year. And maybe one other thing that we want to look at as well, and I know that we haven't addressed this at all so far this live stream, is Stefan Diggs had a significant step backwards in play in the second half of the season. 
versus the beginning of the year. I, I got, I should have pulled all my tweets before this because we tweeted out the splits before and after the change in offensive coordinator. But let me get the date that the offensive coordinator was changed as well. Okay. Do, 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 do. So November 14th, November 16th. So it was, I want to say around this Denver game that we had the change in offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills right around here. And if we're looking at the games before that for Stefan Diggs, 102 receiving yards, 66 receiving yards, 111 120, 121, 100, 58, 70, 86. The games after the change in offensive coordinator, 27, 74, 24, 48, 29, 26, 87, 52, and then 21 when they lose to the Chiefs. So you saw the significant fall off from Stefan Diggs this past season. Some people want to blame it on an injury every single time in the NFL. You see a player, I mean, disappoint that they'll come out the next season and say, Oh, I was playing injured. I was playing through an injury, which everybody in the NFL is. So maybe you want to blame it on that. And maybe, you know, more information on it than I currently do. Maybe you want to go out there and maybe you want to blame it on the change in offensive coordinator, because I see a clear correlation there between the two. Or maybe you want to just say, well, Mason, come on, man. I mean, you're overthinking this. Stefan Diggs turned 30 this past season. This is the natural fall off that you're going to have from a wide receiver of this age. Now, if we wanted to talk about maybe some other small adjustments that we could be making here, pulling back up the community rankings on the site. I mean, the community rankings and the expert rankings are pretty much in lockstep here, but you see that we'll just hit overall in super flex leagues. Josh Allen was number one with both his community and expert rank. Patrick Mahomes was number two in both his community and expert rank. CJ Stroud was number three in both his community and expert rank. If you're going into the future one, I probably am going to put Mahomes ahead of Allen. Of course, from a redraft perspective, it's a little bit different given what Allen can do on the ground in comparison to Mahomes. But I'm probably going to have Mahomes QB1. And I know some people are going out there and previously saying to sell CJ Stroud this offseason. I, I heard a lot of people in our Discord talking about that. For the love of God, why would we be selling CJ Stroud? This is a quarterback that, as a rookie, leads the NFL in passing yards per game is second in the NFL in adjusted yards per pass attempt per game. And like I said last season, I don't think he was propped up by Tank Dell. I don't think he was propped up by Nico Collins, Devin Singletary, and Dalton Schultz. I think it was exactly the opposite in that C.J. Stroud stepped into a room where Nico Collins really hadn't done anything in the NFL. Tank Dell was a 24-year-old rookie wide receiver. Dalton Schultz was a jag. Devin Singletary was, I mean, nothing and I think CJ Stroud elevated everybody's play in there because CJ Stroud is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So I don't know. I hope that we covered a little bit of everything here. I will update the rankings on the site for everybody today. I'll make sure that gets done. I'll probably dive into the numbers a little bit more and maybe get y'all a video out tomorrow looking more in depth, but appreciate you. Hope you have a great one and hope you get to see out with the video tomorrow.